I'm here in Alexander Dennis in Falkirk, where, as I told you on my blog yesterday, the First Minister and I have just published the economic case for independence. At the heart of this document is the massive strength of the Scottish economy. We set out uh, across a range of different sectors just how diverse and strong an economy Scotland has. We know that we are very successful when it comes to energy, oil and gas and renewable energy, but this document also sets out our strength in manufacturing, in food and drink, in tourism, in life sciences, in digital and information technology. Scotland has got a fantastically strong economy and what this document says is that we not only can more than afford to be independent, but that we can be really confident about our prospects as an independent country. But despite all of these strengths, we're not doing as well as we should be. We're not doing as well as many other European countries that are of a very similar size to Scotland. Our long-term economic growth rate lags behind the rest of the UK and many of our comparable neighbours elsewhere in Europe. The gap between rich and poor is uh, too wide. Uh, the UK is the fourth most unequal country in the developed world. Uh, so the argument at the heart of this document is that Westminster policies are holding us back. We need decision-making powers here in Scotland so that we can, like other countries do, tailor our economic policies to suit our needs and circumstances, take the decisions that will support growth, build on these advantages and make sure not just that our economy is as successful as we know it can be, but that everybody across Scotland shares in the benefits of that economic success. That's at the heart of the case for independence and it's exactly what this case for independence is all about.